Just about the most common piano playing question I get is about how to sound more professional. People get in touch and say things like, hey Bill, I practice for hours every week, but still my playing sounds kind of amateurish, kind of rough around the edges. What can I do to achieve a more professional sound? Now the short and boring answer to that question is just keep doing what you're doing because if you practice regularly and consistently then gradually you will start to sound more fluent and more professional. But there are things you can do to speed that process up. So what I'm going to do today is take you through four techniques you can use to achieve that more professional sound you're after without having to practice for years and years and years to get there. They're all fairly straightforward and you can start applying them to your practice today. Just before we get started, I want to tell you about an offer I think you'll be really interested in. I've got a bundle deal running on the digital editions of my three current books. So that's How to Really Play the Piano, The Stuff Your Teacher Never Taught You, Seven Studies in Pop Piano, and An Introduction to Cocktail Piano. Normally, if you bought the ebook versions of those separately, they would cost you about £27. Right now, though, you can get all three for just £18.95. That's a saving of about 30%. And if you've already got one of the books, don't worry, you can still get the discount. Just check out the sales page for more information on that. Now, you need to be able to read a little bit of sheet music to get the most out of these books, but if you can, then I think they'll give you a lot of help developing your skills in improvisation, understanding chords, and much, much more. Thousands of people have bought these books and really enjoyed them, and I think you will as well. To find out more about the bundle deal, just head over to billspianopages.com slash bundle. Okay, let's get on with the show and find out about our first technique for achieving a more professional sound on the piano. Technique number one is to make much more use of separate hands practice. This is something that professionals do a lot. They use separate hands practice throughout the whole process of learning a new piece or a new song. Whereas amateurs tend to practice right hand and then left hand, and as soon as they can, they put their hands together and keep them together. And that's a recipe for problems. Let's look at some practical examples to show you what I mean. Now the principles of separate hand practice that I'm talking about here apply to any style of piano music, whether you're improvising from a lead sheet or chords or playing from a written score. I'll give you examples of both. Let's start off by looking at a written score. So here I've got my big book of Mozart piano sonatas and let's imagine that I'm practicing um, one of his sonatas in D major and I've got this tricky little bit here which has got this fancy looking right hand and what seems to be some jumping around in the left hand. Don't panic if this is above your pay grade by the way, I'm just using it as an example. Let me just play through that section and uh, see if I can do it without fluffing it too much. Here we go. Okay, let's stop it there, not too, not too bad. Now if you gave this to a relative novice or any comparable piece of music to a relative novice who could just about play at this level, typically what he or she would do uh, in, in taking a naive approach to it, if you like, would be to practice the right hand a little bit. Okay, yeah, I think I can more or less get that and practice the left hand a little bit. Yeah, I think I can do that. I think I can do that. And, and once he or she had got to the point where you know they thought they could just about play the two hands separately, straight away they'd put them together. What a good practicer would do would kind of go past the point at which um, he or she felt comfortable with what was going on in the separate hands, okay? And then put them together. So get a good level of competence in the separate hands and then put them together. Crucially, after that, Yes, he or she would practice the two hands together, but also would practice them separately again. So yes, start practicing together. But every now and then go back to. And that helps to build confidence and build fluency and really kind of eradicate small mistakes and unevennesses that creep in. Now what about improvised piano music, like jazz? OK, 
okay? Um, that is the chord progression from uh, a song called Almost Like Being In Love. When I first learned that, the thing I will have done, again, is separate hands practice. Now, with this kind of improvised music, I will have taken a slightly different approach in that I will have gone left hand first and focused on the left hand before thinking about the right hand at all. And that's so that I can get the chord progression in my head. So I will have sat there for a long time just doing this. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, dum, 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 dum. You know, maybe 20, 30, 40 times through the chord progression. And importantly, I would have made sure that I didn't play exactly the shape, same shapes over and over and over again. I would have introduced consciously a bit of variation so that I wasn't just programming in a chord, uh, you know, the same chord shapes every time. Because, you know, I wanted when I was improvising to be able to vary things a little bit. So the very first thing I would do would be to try to automate that left hand. Then I will probably try putting a right hand on top of it. So I probably wouldn't try uh, separate hands practice from my right hand straight away. Instead, I will play around in the right using some of the principles of improvisation that I've talked about in lots of other tutorials. And to start with, it will probably be probably be quite choppy but that wouldn't be a problem because then what I would do as I identified some of the stuff I could do in the right hand over that chord progression is take the left hand out of the picture so I could focus on the right and just focus on that right and just play around with the notes with the sounds thinking about some of the riffs and licks I could use you know, mess about like that and then gradually put it together. Again, as with the classical stuff, even once I had it fairly competently hands together, I would take it apart and practice hands separately. It's something I still do even with songs that I really know because separating out the two tasks, the difficult task of deciding what to do in your left and the difficult task of deciding to do what in your right and working on both individually means you can do both much better when you put them together. Technique number two is to double check your hand position on the piano keyboard. Bad hand position is a really common problem among beginner and amateur piano players and it can really get in the way of making progress. Now I'd love to be able to demonstrate good hand position to you, but unfortunately I can't. That's because I've got a congenital deformity called radio ulnar synostosis in my lower arms. Basically it means my hands are screwed on slightly the wrong way. Now that doesn't affect me in everyday life, but it does mean that when I sit at the piano keyboard, I hold my hands in a slightly unnatural position. It feels perfectly natural to me, but for you guys it would be wrong, so I'm a bad example to follow. What I've done instead is find three stock photos of piano players sat at the keyboard with different hand positions. And what I'm going to do now is go through them and pull out the good things and the bad things about what they're doing. So this first photo is a classic example of how not to hold your hands on the piano keyboard. This guy is making two fundamental mistakes that I very often see in beginners. And if you're making them, you need to fix them or you're going to struggle to get a really professional sound out of your piano playing. The first thing he's doing wrong is his wrist position. It's far too low. Most of the time, your wrist wants to be above the level of your fingertips. Sometimes it might come down flat level with them, depending on the style of music you're playing, but most of the time your wrist wants to be up. That gives you the best possible control of your fingers because it means you have a more natural shape to your hands and gravity is on your side, okay? So wrists above fingertips most of the time. The other thing he's doing wrong is playing just the first kind of inch of the keys, yeah? He needs his hands much deeper into the keyboard. You can see that he, actually his thumbs are even hanging off. They're, they're not doing any good there. He might need them in a second. Those thumbs want to be above the keys, poised and ready for whatever is coming next. This guy in our second photo is a much better example. You can see his whole arm, he's sitting upright, his arm is relaxed, his wrists are nice and high above his fingers, and you can see that his fingers are in a good position over the keyboard. He can drop onto any of those notes pretty quickly. He doesn't have his thumbs hanging off like guy number one, okay? So that is a good, strong position on the piano keyboard. He can move practically anywhere from where he's sitting there. Yeah, just to look at a, um, a photo from above, 
in our third photo, I can't quite see what this guy's wrists are doing. I think his left hand wrist is pretty flat, but that's understandable if you look at his hand position. But look at the way he's reaching over the keys. He's got his thumb on that D in his right hand, and the third finger is deep into that B flat. Yeah, that's what experienced piano players do. They don't hang off the edge of the keys. They keep their hands poised and they dive deep into the keys for a nice secure grip on them, a nice secure landing on them when they need to do that. If you get a good hand position like this, wrist up deep into the keys, being flexible and, and relaxed, then that is the absolutely fundamental starting point for a good professional sound on the piano. So when this tutorial is over, go to the piano and look at your hand's position. If it's not quite right, try to adjust it. It'll take a little while and a little bit of practice, but as you get a better hand position, you'll find that your playing becomes easier and gets better. Technique number three, practice your scales and practice them properly. Don't just use them as warm-ups. Actually try to get better at playing your scales on the piano. All other things being equal, good regular scale practice is what really makes the difference between the amateur clunky sound and the smooth fluent professional sound. So why does practicing your scales make such a big difference to the quality of your piano playing? What it comes down to is that regular scale practice gives you a systematic and highly efficient way of improving a huge number of small skills which, when you put them all together, add up to overall fluency and control on the piano keyboard. Now those small skills that I'm talking about are all fine movements of your fingers and several types of fine movement, okay? So we have the sort of fine movement associated with rapid changes of position, which we'll, I'll show you in a second, but also the fine movement associated with putting exactly the right amount of pressure and exactly the right amount of attack on each key as you hit it. Let's just have a look at the scale of C major, just in the right hand. Now, if I practice that scale and I try to get it as even and as smooth as I can, and that's always what I'm trying to do when, I, when I'm practicing my scales, then I'm working on several different things. First of all, overall, I'm practicing um, the, the control I put on each key because left of their own devices our fingers which have different strengths will put different amounts of pressure on each key so our thumb will really hammer down whereas our fifth will be quite light if you listen to a novice practicing their scales they often sound like this, yeah? I'm, I'm exaggerating, but not by much, because the thumb is really strong and these fingers are really weak. So the first thing that we're doing when we're practicing our scales is improving that kind of control. And we're doing it in lots of different contexts, not just in the scale of C major, but also in the scale of A flat major and lots of minor keys and, and lots of different things. So every time you come across particular hand shapes, particular hand, hand positions on the piano, then the chances are you will have already practiced them in your scales and your hands will be used to putting the right amount of pressure for each finger, depending on what you're trying to achieve. Scales also help with transitions between notes, especially when it comes to the thumb under and finger over stuff. If we come down a C major scale, we have a few awkward stretches. So for example, from the thumb there to the fourth over on the B. Now practicing that very regularly means that when we come across it in the wild, as it were, when we're playing a piece, it's, it's nothing strange to us. It's out and you know we can just use our, unconsciously probably, use the skills we've learned from practicing the scale in that piece. And again, doing our, practicing our scales across lots of different keys means that when we come to uh, playing music in lots of different keys, very few things will surprise us in terms of individual finger movements. We've practiced all of those movements, or most of them, in advance in, in a very kind of systematic way. And finally, technique number four, stop worrying so much about playing the right notes. What on earth am I on about? Surely playing the right notes in the right order is the most important thing to do when you're sat at the piano. Actually, it's not. It's one of the most important things to do, but it's a means to an end. 
and that end is producing a good musical performance. Now, if you're going to produce a good musical performance, if you're going to sound like a professional, then you need to get the notes right as much as you can. But you also need to think about other things. You need to think about expression. You need to think about dynamics, your louds and softs. You need to think about phrasing. You need to think about the whole thing as a musical process rather than just as a mechanical process of hitting the right keys at the right time. Now that can be difficult, especially if you're a beginner or an amateur player, it can be really easy to get into the zone of just focusing on pressing the right notes at the right time. Sometimes you have to do that, but it can be really easy to forget the musical side of things when you get into that zone. So always try to have at least half an ear on the musical effect you're creating. Always listen to yourself. If it's a struggle to listen to yourself sometimes, and yes it will be, then record your playing or video yourself. Then once you finish your practice, take a break, listen back to what you've played and use the information you get from that playback to feed into your next practice session. You have to remember that your job when you're sat at the piano, it's not just to press the keys, your job is to be a musician and to create music. So that's it for this tutorial. I really hope you've picked up some ideas you can put into your own practice to help you achieve that more professional sound. If you have liked it, hit like and hit subscribe as well if you're not already subscribed to my channel. You might also like to follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram links are all in the description text below this video. And don't forget that bundle deal I mentioned earlier on my books, three eBooks for £18.95. Head over to billspianopages.com slash bundle to find out more. Finally, you might be interested in my Patreon crowdfunding campaign. Supporting me on Patreon doesn't cost very much and you get some fantastic benefits, not least access to my piano packs which are proving really popular at the moment. You get priority support from me personally when you have a piano playing problem and you just get to join my really fun, really supportive Patreon community. You can find out more about that at patreon.com slash bellhilton. Okay, there we go. Happy piano playing. I'll see you next time.